The world is awaiting the next move in the Russia-Ukraine conflict. Canada announced the first round of economic sanctions against Russia yesterday. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau will attend a virtual meeting of G7 leaders tomorrow to discuss the situation in Ukraine. For more on the situation there, we're joined live now by Oral Brown, Professor of International Relations and Political Science at the University of Toronto. Professor Brown, thanks so much for joining us again. So we know that uh, Ukraine has now declared a state of emergency. Uh, we have not seen this many Russian military deployed since World War II. How confident are you that this invasion is going to happen, and has it already happened? It is already happening. I mean, let's not forget that there was an invasion in 2014 where Russia invaded and illegally annexed Crimea. Now it is on the verge of annexing these regions. First, they recognize their independence. They're sending additional troops. Troops are already there, and they're likely to annex it. So this is a kind of invasion of Ukraine slice by slice. Mm -hmm. It is a psychological war. It is an economic war. It is a cyber war. And it is a physical, kinetic war. Yeah, so it sounds like it's even more, I guess, powerful than what we've seen uh, during the previous wars because we have all these new factors at play. Uh, let's talk about this state of emergency being declared in Ukraine. What exactly does that mean for Ukraine in terms of what it's doing, what it's alerting its citizens to do now that this slice by slice, as you say, slow invasion is taking place? It is a recognition of heightened danger. And what we have seen is, sadly, a failure of Western deterrence. Here is the most powerful military political alliance in human history, NATO. 30 members, they have a gross domestic product that is at least 15 times the size of Russia, which is only a remnant of a superpower. Yet they have been bullied, they've been intimidated. Ukraine has been tortured and maimed in a way by Russia. And NATO is playing with sanctions, but we have not used hard power in combination with soft power to deter. This is not to say that we should go to war. War should be avoided. Mm -hmm. But we have not even allowed the Ukrainians to have the defensive armaments that they desperately need to be able to resist Russia, not to attack Russia. Mm -hmm. So, so you're saying that this is a failure of Western deference. You're, you're kind of saying NATO hasn't done enough. We know uh, that the U.S. has a troop station there somewhere. Canada is sending more troops. I believe they, they're saying an additional 460 personnel, uh, adding to the already 800 who are there, but also saying that approximately 3,400 more Canadian troops will be sent if needed. At last check, I believe there were 150,000 Russian soldiers bordering three sides of Ukraine. Uh, so, so what are you saying, that the NATO countries are not sending enough weapons, enough troops? What exactly do you think they should be doing? Mr. Putin has not been impressed. The results are in. The exalted rhetoric of Mr. Biden warning Mr. Putin time and again did not seem to leave any kind of weight or have any kind of weight on Vladimir Putin has proceeded. So we keep doing the same thing over and over again. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Biden now is selling some defensive armaments to Ukraine, but not enough. Germany has refused to send any defensive armaments to Ukraine. They have even refused to allow Estonia to transfer German guns from artillery pieces from Estonia uh, to Ukraine. That is, that is not helpful. NATO was supposed to spend 2% of its gross domestic product, every NATO state. Germany hasn't met that by any stretch of the imagination. We are far short of that. Mr. Putin knows this. So he's playing a very high stakes game of poker, mm -hmm. for sure bets. And so far, he has played geopolitics very, very well. We need to understand reality. We can't play the same diplomatic games. We can't engage in the same kind of negotiations, as much as negotiations are absolutely preferable to conflict. But we have to understand that there has been a massive failure on the part of the West. OK, Professor Oral Brown, wish we had more time to chat about this, but always appreciate your insight and your time. Thank you.